shy, it's fun to speak. Say it in English, speak all week. Come on, listen, read and write. English only day and night. And give me more, more, more. Really more, more, more. Give me more every day. Give me more. That's the way. Welcome, everybody, to this year's Helbling English Tour. We are delighted to be able to give you a first taste of our two new course books, More, the new version of More, and English Step by Step. I'm Herbert Puchter, and with me on stage is Chris Drory. Chris is an international teacher trainer. He is a writer of ELT materials, and Chris is a published novelist. I'm delighted to officially welcome Chris as one of our two new members of the author team. Chris and I have been co-developing and co-writing together with the other authors for some time now. But Chris and I actually have known each other for a lot longer. Yeah, thank you, Herbert. It's, it's great to be here. I'm delighted to be part of the team now. And as you say, we, um, we've worked together for some time. I think it was possibly 2013 when we first met and worked together. And we had the opportunity to do teacher training in various places, including Brazil, Mexico. And I think it's fair to say we, we had a, re a real shared understanding immediately. And our That's collaboration right. has always been really fruitful and really smooth and easy. So it's, it's really great to be collaborating with you and the, the rest of the team on, on these projects as well. Same here, Chris. Okay. Okay, so let's get started and let's have a look at what we're going to cover in this um, session. We're going to start out with the Neue Lehrplan 2023. We'll first of all uh, give you a short summary of some of the key aspects of the um, general curriculum for the teaching of uh, 10 to 14 year olds, followed by uh, some thoughts and a summary, a quick summary of the uh, key points from the syllabus for the teaching of English. In the second part, we're going to present the new version of more. And in part three, uh, we will present our um, totally new course book, English Step by Step. The last part of today's session is about the digital package that we are going to offer for both courses. Looking at the curriculum for the teaching of 10 to 14 year olds, what comes to mind is the saying that as a teacher, you hold the future of the world in your hands. And that's all about um, the language teacher not just being the teacher of the new language. As language teachers, we are, of course, at the same time um, all round educators. We are concerned, and this is one of the um, key points of the curriculum, we're concerned with helping our students um, develop properly, become uh, responsible adults um, one day. And the contribution that we can make to that is about helping them develop competencies. Competencies that help them to meet and um, deal with the many changes, um, complexities and challenges that today's world um, actually offers. And that's what um, your main task is, and that's where we are going to support you with offering you materials that help you uh, to engage your learners in learning processes and um, help them develop in such a way that they are actually going to be able to meet the needs and demands and changes and challenges of tomorrow's world. 
Uh, and of course, it's perfectly natural that all of these changes that are happening in the world, the complexity and the changing needs that they imply are reflected in the new layer plan for 2023, including this statement here that teaching needs to go beyond a simple transmission of knowledge. I think this is something that we all have known for, for, for a long time, obviously, Teaching is not like filling up a car with fuel. It's not a simple case of lifting the lid off the students' heads and pouring knowledge in there, pouring vocabulary and grammar into, into the students. Of course, that knowledge is important in the same way that fuel is important for a car, but it's not important for its own sake. It's important because of what it can help you to do. So, in the case of a car, you put fuel into a car because it can take you places. In the case of knowledge, the important thing is how that knowledge can then be applied to take students through their journey in life and how far can it actually take them. And of course, not all vehicles are the same. Different vehicles require different fuel in the same way that students require different knowledge and different approaches sometimes. And of course, Students are not machines. They are living beings that are constantly transforming, evolving, changing over time. And therefore, their needs are changing. Their environment is changing, but they are changing as well. And this transformation of the external environment, as well as the individual student, means that the role of the teacher has to be to help them through that transformation by paying attention to their specific needs and also by equipping them to actually put into practice those competencies that uh, Herbert mentioned uh, a little earlier. And this is also reflected in the new layer plan for 2023, the importance of supporting the development of 21st century skills. I remember in the last century, uh, more time ago than I care to admit, when I was at school in England, we had the three R's. And I know English pronunciation can be a bit weird, but the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, I, they never really made sense to me. They don't all begin with the letter R. These make a lot more sense, especially for today's world, where the four C's, creativity, communication, collaboration, and critical thinking are really central to being an effective user of language, but also to being an effective integrated citizen in today's society. So this is really key that as teachers, we help learners to develop these competencies and these 21st century skills. Also, the last two bullet points here, the importance of helping learners to become better and more effective learners, more autonomous learners and helping them to work with, to study with, to deal with, to handle, to be creative with digital media and technologies. And these last two things can be quite challenging, these last two bullet points, the things included there can be quite challenging. And help is obviously gratefully received in, in your role as teachers. We're going to show you today specific ideas and specific tools within these two new courses that will help you to do that. Uh, still on the, the area of the curriculum as specified in the new uh, layer plan, there are also now these mandatory cross-curricular competencies, including the topics and themes that you see on the slide here. Um, some of these will look quite challenging. I mean, for the, the age group we're talking about, lower secondary school students, how do you engage them and equip them and educate them in something like political education? The point is it can be done. It can be done in a light and entertaining way that nevertheless has a serious educational and learning purpose. And again, we're going to show you material that actually does that a bit later in the session. Uh, just zoning in uh, a bit more on specific competency goals in the, the new layer plan for lower secondary, the four C's that I mentioned earlier are reflected here. 
So looking uh, one by one, we have students uh, need to be able to take responsibility for projects and complete them as a team. So there we have collaboration. Uh, draw the right conclusions from any mistakes they might make. That implies critical thinking. Uh, creatively develop ideas and solve problems and communicate empathetically. So the four C's reflected here as they are also reflected in specific competency goals relating to media education. So we have um, creative implementation of design and other ideas. We have being able to critically think about and select appropriate media offerings and also to think about the kind of influences that media may have and, and communicate um, those and how they communicate with you. And then lastly, cooperate and interact with, with other people through uh, digital means. And that, again, implies both communication and collaboration. And all of these things taken together obviously imply not a, a complete change in the role of the teacher, but a, a shift in, in, in the perspective on the teacher role. So going back to the point about teaching is not just a case of providing and transmitting knowledge. It's about being a facilitator in the development and consolidation of these really key competencies and 21st century skills. It's about enabling and facilitating learning in diverse learning environments that, that could imply both in the classroom and at home. It may be out of choice or it may be because of things that are imposed on us by circumstances in the world like uh, the COVID situation, for example. Um, and lastly, it also implies, going back to that point about not all vehicles are the same, they don't all require the same fuel or the same treatment, the same being the case for students. We need to be able to understand them and help them as individuals. Now, that is quite challenging, obviously, because at any given time, you may have 100 students under your care in your different groups. How do you do that effectively for all of them all of the time? How is that humanly possible? Again, we'll show you uh, in today's session some specific materials and digital tools that come with these two courses that will help you to do that. Thank you, Chris. Let's now have a look at the syllabus for the teaching of English. The, the general curriculum is the frame for this um, uh, syllabus. And um, the, the key point here, first of all, is that there are three central subject-related uh, concepts that need to be considered. It's not just about language. It's about communication, of course, and it's about communication and effect. Our learners need to learn the new language in situationally embedded contexts so that they actually get used to getting, um, uh, to achieving the purpose of their communication in interaction with other people. The second central uh, theme or central uh, concept is meaning and form. Obviously, both are important. Meaning may be a little more important than form, but um, you know, when, when our students want to talk uh, and want to learn to talk and uh, to write in a bit more sophisticated ways, then of course form becomes extremely important. So both are actually relevant um, for the students um, if we want them to learn to communicate successfully. And uh, last but not least, we're talking culture and society. Students are learning the new language in order to be able to communicate with people from other countries and from other cultures. And in order to do that successfully, um, what is required is not just the language, uh, but the, the attitudes that need to be uh, developed, attitudes such as openness to otherness, openness to other um, lifestyles, habits, uh, beliefs, um, uh, cultural uh, kind of like habits, tolerance and respect. 
From here, let's have a look at the, the teaching objectives. Uh, not surprisingly, they are actually based on the requirements uh, listed in the Common European um, Framework um, uh, or reference uh, for languages and the um, companion volume that was published in, in 2020. Um, the, the concrete targets are A1 with some A2 descriptors in year one. Year two covers or completes A2. Uh, there's A2 plus in year three. And in year four, we are talking A2 plus with some selected B1 descriptors. Why are we presenting to you today two new courses, the new version of MORE and uh, English step by step? Well, the reason is that uh, the syllabus, the new curriculum and the syllabus actually made it impossible for us to continue with the model that um, you have been working with for quite a number of years. The model of having two different versions of the same course book, a general course and an enriched course as from year three. This model is not going to work anymore. As from the next school year, there will be two distinct courses um, uh, for year one, the new version of more, and English step by step. The new syllabus is going to be introduced uh, with the beginning of the school year 23-24, and that's when the first levels of uh, the new version of more and English step by step are going to be used um, um, at um, school. Uh, and then a new level of the Lehrplan and the new level of the new version of more and English step by step will be introduced on a year by year basis. Just like to add that both um, courses cover the requirements of the new um, syllabus 2023 and both have, uh, will actually be in the Schulbuch uh, Liste so you can um, select, you can make um, an informed uh, decision on which of the two courses uh, you will want to work with. You can trust that we have produced these two new courses with the same dedication, the same enthusiasm and the same care that uh, we put in uh, when we developed uh, our previous incarnations of more. You can be sure that uh, together with our wonderful editorial team and our production teams, um, as, as authors, um, we, we will do our very, very best to give you the kind of material that helps you to develop the language competences and all the other competences that you need to develop in the best possible way. And this dedication to excellence, this dedication to quality is also mirrored in Helbling's mission statement. In order to prepare students in an optimal way for their journey of lifelong learning, our materials are based on the latest research and help teachers raise their students' motivation, facilitate their social-emotional learning, and foster key language and life competences. Okay, so this is part two, and we are going to have a look at the new version of more now. Well, the first thing we have to say is that before we look at what's new about the new version of MORE, it's not a completely new course. It still, of course, got all the things that have made it Austria's most successful and popular 
course books. So the things that your learners uh, like, the inspiring content, the stories, the engaging and challenging uh, activities and, and learning um, episodes, the cyber homework, all these things, the videos, to mention just a few, they are of course still there. But then it's been adapted to meet the requirements of the new syllabus. We also have a new feature, we're going to show you one uh, example in a, in a minute, which is actually a new series of videos, vlogs, as I mentioned um, previously. We're delighted to be able to present to you for the first time today the personal learning track that helps students to prepare a lot more um, effectively for tests and for the same purpose, the vocabulary trainer that helps students with the long-term um, retention, long-term memory uh, retention of new vocabulary. And then we have, of course, replaced some of the reading texts, some of the listening texts, and all the songs. So you have new reading, new listening texts, and new songs in the new version of more. Well, here's an overview um, of the course package, the, the key uh, components. So there is, of course, a student's book, there's, there's a workbook, and there are uh, the different versions, the print version and ebook, or the ebook plus with a media app uh, for the students where they can actually access all the audios, where they can access all the uh, videos. There is, of course, still uh, the cyber homework um, package that's become uh, such a successful uh, feature. During peak uh, times, uh, we have uh, between 80 and 100,000 students doing their cyber homework at the same uh, time. And then the two new uh, features, we've mentioned them several times now. You notice we are excited ourselves about it. The personal learning track and the vocabulary trainer, and we're really looking forward to sharing them with you in the digital session. Well, what else is new? I have already presented uh, to you our no, uh, new co-author, um, Chris Jory, and uh, there is also another new co-author, um, Gavin Biggs, who some of you, I'm sure, have met. He was uh, actually touring with us when we, uh, la on the last Helbling English tour, and he was also present when we handed out the awards um, to the winners of the Helbling um, reading uh, competition. We have streamlined the content so more one, the new version of more one now has 15 rather than 18 units without, of course, losing any of the language or any of the CEFR uh, descriptors. The workbook is in full color now. So this is not only more motivational for students when you think of the um, uh, word files the last two pages of each unit, um, the, the colorful um, illustrations there help, of course, retain the new words, the new lexical sets better in the student's long-term uh, memory. So now let's take a closer look and Chris is taking over from me. Thank you, Herbert. Okay, so the uh, first thing that we're going to dive into in a little more detail is the importance of helping students with learning to learn, learning how to become more effective learners. I mentioned that already uh, in the introductory session, that this is emphasized in the new layer plan for 2023. And therefore, of course, we are taking this seriously within uh, the new edition of more. And this brings to mind for me, you know, that old uh, saying about if you 
uh, give somebody a fish, then they will eat for a day. If you teach them how to fish, they will eat for forevermore every day after that. And uh, when I was a, a kid of about the same age as the, the, the children, the, the students who will be using uh, this course, 10, 11, 12, 13, um, I was really into fishing and I had no one to teach me how to fish, so I had to learn that for myself. I also had to learn how to learn how to fish. That was fine with fishing, I didn't mind spending long hours on sunny riverbanks in the summer holidays, but of course, when it comes to school and education and teaching time and learning time, time is precious and it's important that learning is both effective and also efficient. And uh, one of the ways in which we are addressing this is at the beginning of the uh, student's book, there is a double page spread which addresses the students directly in their own language, giving them tips and ideas and pointing out to them uh, which parts of the course, which features of the course will help them to become more effective learners. Also, um, it's very important when you set out to learn anything that you're very clear uh, what it is that you are attempting to learn. You have a very clear objective and goal, and also that you are um, then encouraged in some way to reflect after a period of learning on what you've actually achieved. So you can see your success, but also so that you can uh, think about where you need to improve further. And in the student's book itself, uh, there are very clear learning goals here at the start of every unit uh, in two categories. So it says here, at the end of unit one, you know, and it lists the things that you as a learner will know at the end of that unit, and you can, and it lists the things that you will be able to do that you couldn't do at the start of the unit. This ties in with what I was telling you earlier about the importance not only of providing knowledge and students acquiring knowledge, but also being able to do things with that knowledge. Then at the end of every unit, they are encouraged down there at the bottom in green, you can see it says, now, now go back to page eight, that is the start of the unit, check with a partner what you know and what you can do. So they are encouraged to go back and reflect on what they've learned and where they may need to improve further. Okay, and of course, um, at the end of the unit, after the students have gone back to the unit goals and reflected on what they know and what they can do, it's quite normal, quite natural, that there will be things uh, ab about which they're still not fully confident and where they need to do more work. And here we have this uh, fantastic new component, this fantastic new tool called My Personal Learning Track, which is accessible via eBook Plus. So those students who have eBook Plus will be able to go into their personal learning track and do further work on the areas in which they still need more help. And uh, this not only addresses those areas of relative weakness, but also helps them in that self-reflection. It helps to raise their own awareness of areas in which they do need to do more work. And it's nicely signposted here in eBook Plus, down there in the bottom right, there's a prompt to go to their personal learning track and do that further work that they specifically, as an individual, need to do. We'll tell you more about that later, uh, as I said. Okay, and at that point, I'll hand you back again to Herbert. Thank you, Chris. Now, as we said uh, previously, um, according to the general uh, curriculum, there are a number, actually these five um, points, that need to be covered also in English. So students need to develop competencies in these areas, educational, vocational and life orientation, entrepreneurship education, media education, political education, economic, financial and consumer education. Now, this is of course easier, say, in uh, the third year 
or in the fourth year. But actually what the syllabus requires is that um, each of these uh, competencies areas and each of these uh, thematic areas can actually be covered in each of the four years. Well, in all fairness, that requires thinking um, so that um, we can come up with materials and learning processes that are kind of accessible for 10-year-olds. If you think of uh, political education, uh, for example, how do we make that to a certain extent enjoyable and uh, help them um, find a way of thinking about this and developing competences? And believe it or not, we actually believe that we have found a real nice way of helping them to um, deal with these rather sophisticated topics. We have developed what we call a series of our young world um, uh, pages. There are four pages in the new version of More One, and these pages start with a video, as you can see. Number one is watch the video, what does Luna, that's the flogger that you're going to see in the video, what does she um, do in her free time? So that's a first global question, then maybe you want to play the video again, and then students, um, after, after watching it again, do the true and false activity in number two. Hi, Luna here. Welcome to my world. And today, it's all about... So, you probably know that I love animals. But did you know I love them so much, I work with them. No, I'm not a zookeeper or a vet. No, in my free time, I work at an animal shelter. I don't get money for it. I do it because I want to help and be a good person. Look at these cats. A woman finds them in the street and brings them to the shelter. They're so sweet, aren't they? Now, all I have to do is find a home for them. Any of you want one? And what about these dogs? Ah, I want them all! But, we've got a problem. And the problem is... Money. The animals need food. That costs money. They need a nice place. That costs money. They need medical help. That costs money. But we haven't got enough money. But then I had an idea. Look, write an email to the mayor and ask for help. Kids don't often write emails to a mayor, but think about it. Every class at your school has a speaker. That's democracy. And every town has a mayor. Adults can go and vote for a mayor. The mayor looks after the schools, for example, the kindergartens, the police, the fire brigade, and so on. And if there's a problem in the town, you can go and talk to the mayor, right? And ta-da! This morning, the answer arrived. Dear Luna, says the mayor, coolly, eh? thank you for your email. What you're doing at the animal shelter is fantastic. I understand your problem, and I'd like to help you and the animals. Let's have a meeting and talk about the problem. I'm sure we can do something. I hope he's got some money. So, 
Are there any problems in your town? Well, go on. Write to the mayor. What's the worst that can happen? See you soon. <laughs>
um, server space of your school and how you can then analyze um, the students' work uh, together with them. So this is in line with the cross-curricular um, competencies area that um, is listed under uh, media education. All right, over to you again, Chris. Thank you, Herbert. <coughs> Okay, so uh, turning to a, a, a different area that I'd, I'd like to look at in some detail, uh, something that Herbert mentioned earlier is that there is a lot of brand new content within the student's book. This is content with a similar flavor to that which you already know and love from the previous edition, but it's important to refresh the content. And, um, Obviously, within reading texts and listening texts, these are really key places where we need new material to keep students uh, interested and also so that it's, it's interesting for you when you're new, using a new edition. Um, I'm going to talk you through uh, four examples of uh, the kind of hooks that we include in the reading texts in New More to hook the students' attention. And earlier I talked you through the four Cs uh, in terms of those 21st century skills. I'm going to talk you through uh, four Fs now. Uh, the first one here in this text is facts. So kids are of this kind of age are so hungry for new facts. I know from our own kids at home, um, they're like hoovers, like vacuum cleaners going around hoovering up facts wherever they can find them. And I learned some really uh, weird and wonderful things at the dinner table, like the, the, la the, the speed record for going downhill on a skateboard is 150 kilometers an hour. Not a particularly profound fact, but it's still very memorable and quite quirky and interesting. Here we have a nice text with real-world facts about uh, rescue teams working in different areas like the Coast Guard, cave rescue, etc. Also an engaging area for, for students, that kind of a, a adventure topic. So factual texts. Uh, the second F word is fiction or narratives. I'm going to talk a bit later about the power of stories, so I won't go into too much detail here, but just to say that telling stories and wanting to listen to stories and learning from stories is a very human thing. It goes back to the, the dawn of time. So we have uh, fictional texts as well. So fact, fiction. The third F is fun or humor, another hook. Um, before I get into this story here, uh, I'll just tell you, a, it's actually a, a real story, but it's quite fun. Where, where I uh, live in Italy in the the far northwest corner of Tuscany. Uh, it's, it's quite wild. There are lots of woods. There are lots of wild boar, you know, wild pigs that live in the area. And there's a true story that uh, a few months ago, uh, a wild boar wandered out of the woods and up the high street into the little square where the cafe is. And it walked into the cafe and spent a few minutes in there while the cafe owners were trying to encourage it politely to leave. It eventually left without ordering a coffee, but fortunately causing no damage to itself or anyone else. Um, this is slightly similar, this story. It's about an animal, a different animal, a horse in the Midwest of America that goes into Mr. Anderson's shop. And as horses do when they go into shops, it wanders around, picks up a basket, selects some apples, some carrots, goes to the till, and Mr. Anderson is pushing things through and adding up the total. And then he looks up and he says, wow, a horse in my shop. I'm so surprised. Um, but anyway, that's uh, $288. And the horse says, you're surprised that no horses tend to come in here. I'm not surprised. $288 for carrots and apples. That's outrageous. And the horse leaves without paying. So it's a nice, simple story, a, a bit of fun. The third hook, the third F word, fun and humor. And uh, the fourth F word is uh, feelings, emotions, uh, that important element of making language your own and making it meaningful by having that kind of emotional connection uh, to what you're, you're, you're using in class or when you're studying at home. 
this story here is a, a nice story about an animal, a dog, uh, that um, goes to live somewhere else with the family's grandpa, escapes, comes home, finds its toys, and then goes back to grandpa's house and is happy. But it's about uh, the kids connecting with the feelings of the dog and feeling that empathy for, for in this case, this, this nice uh, border collie. Um, that really is about those hooks, the, the, the facts, the fiction, uh, the fun, and the feelings that make the material inherently interesting and engaging and creates that emotional connection. It's also important uh, that these texts work well from a differentiation perspective. So we've talked a bit today already about the importance of addressing individual learners' needs. And we do that here in a variety of different ways with, with uh, selected reading texts. So firstly, there is an audio version which uh, students can listen to while they read. That already provides additional support. Secondly, that audio version, and we'll demo this for you later, the audio version can be played at different speeds depending on what the student feels comfortable with. They can listen to a slightly slower version and then a slightly slower version again until they feel comfortable going up to full speed. Another um, way in which we are addressing and helping with differentiation is by providing a graphic cartoon story type of version of the text, so that this is more accessible in terms of level and level of challenge. It means that learners who need that visual support can do this version first, and then, if they want to, they can go on and use the, the, the main text version that is on the page in the student's book. And this is available uh, for the teacher via the teacher's book and also via eBook Plus. Uh, as I mentioned, um, eBook Plus students can uh, see these graphic versions and also via the media app through which they can have access via the access code in uh, their printed book. Uh, they work equally well on uh, a laptop, a computer, a tablet, or a phone. They're optimized to look great on phones as well. And at that point, I'll hand you back again to Herbert. Thank you, Chris. I can't help thinking there's going to be a story coming up somewhere soon where a horse and a wild boar go to a cafeteria together. <laughs> okay, now another new feature in the new version of Moore uh, is something that um, colleagues uh, have asked us for some time, and that is to increase the number of listening tasks. And, and we have done that by adding uh, listening as a regular feature to the workbook. You can see here um, a page developing um, uh, speaking and um, uh, listening and dialogue work, sorry. And it's from the area talking about food and eating habits. You can see that on this one page, we have one, two, three, four, five uh, different uh, listening tasks. So um, students can really develop their uh, listening autonomously. Um, it's probably also important to say that in the eBook Plus, they can uh, access these listenings very directly by just clicking on the um, audio icon. And um, there is also going to be a new feature which we're going to be talking about later, but I'd like to um, put a pin there, and that is, um, you know, some students sometimes find it difficult to understand uh, listening content because it's simply spoken too fast. So, mark my words here, there is an option for differentiation for those students also. Um, the workbook, of course, has all kinds of parallel texts. Um, Chris mentioned um, and gave you a summary of the horse um, story that comes to Mr. Anderson's shop. There is another version here in the workbook, which is great because when students do their reading at home, it's good if they already have some prior knowledge of the 
Textgenre and the kind of context so they can easily um, access the content of the new story uh, too. Now, um, just a quick overview of the key features and the benefits. It's got the, the new version of more. It's got the same tried and tested methodology that you have trusted over the years. Um, a lot of cognitive and emotional engagement, even when it comes to um, uh, talking about and conveying pretty challenging um, competencies and um, top uh, thematic areas. There is um, this enhanced video content, think of the vlogs, you've only seen Luna, there's also a boy, Jamie, so we have a nice balance there. Um, then uh, effective development of all four skills with um, more listening added to the workbook. And last but not least, we haven't presented this, but we keep referring to it because we are so excited about it. The individualized support that every student gets through the personal learning track and the vocabulary trainer. Part three of today's session, our new course book, English Step by Step. It is, of course, um, a course book that is fully in line with the new syllabus requirements. It's um, also uh, been handed in for approval for the MS and the AHS, and it will be in the Schulbuch uh, list for you to um, select from. Um, the key points, of course, from the Lehrplan are all well covered. It's um, um, a course that teaches communicative competencies, language competencies, and um, cross-curricular and intercultural, cross-cultural uh, competencies is based on the principles of communicative language teaching, of course. Step by step, um, compared to more, has 12 um, units. And what's interesting is that the internal structure, and we're going to show that in a, in a minute, of each unit follows a recurring pattern. So the uh, different content areas and the different learning processes, they um, uh, recur at a certain um, uh, pattern, which helps students, especially students who find it maybe a little bit more difficult to focus their attention. It helps them um, uh, with extending their uh, extension um, span. It also helps uh, to develop um, basic work routines and learning techniques more um, effectively. Uh, English step-by-step step optimally supports you, so you can optimally support learners in engaging them cognitively and emotionally uh, with the help of a wide range of options for differentiated uh, learning. Of course, and I think this is a hallmark of, of um, Helbling and the, the kind of course books we have developed for you uh, over the years. It has a, a wide range of appealing texts, videos in, in culturally interesting contexts, a fantastic new um, video uh, story, actually a fantasy story, and um, another video series which is about school life uh, in the UK, as well as emotionally and cognitively engaging activities and um, content. The quality of the audiovisual and the digital media is outstanding, and new language is presented in dynamic and uh, culturally interesting 
context. The key point, I've said this already, is differentiation and scaffolding, to use one of the technical terms um, uh, when talking about uh, differentiation. So it safely leads every learner uh, from reception towards successful production. That's a key point here. Um, no student is going to be left behind. It helps you to really reach out to all students through the rich um, options of differentiated learning. Let's have a look at the course package. It's, of course, very, very similar to what um, more has to offer. We have um, the student's book, we have the workbook, again, the different versions, the print version um, and the ebook, or the ebook plus with the media app for the students. There is, of course, um, the option for you to give them um, uh, their homework uh, digitally. Cyber homework is, of course, there. And both new options, the, the um, uh, personal learning track and the vocabulary trainer are, of course, available also um, for students who have the um, e-book uh, plus. Okay, this is uh, a look at the table of contents. I'm not going to read out the different um, uh, topics um, and topic areas, but as you can see, we have actually 12 Units. Now let's um, uh, take a closer look. Let's look at what I call the recurring pattern of content and activities. Uh, let's look at the first spread here, the first double um, uh, page. Um, similarly to, to what you have in more, we start out by um, giving students an overview of the things they know and they can do and they will know and will be able to do at the end of the unit. And, and just as a reminder, at the end of the unit, they can go back here and they can tick um, these, uh, these boxes. Then on the first page, um, there is always uh, the introduction of the first lexical set. There are two lexical sets in each unit. The first one is introduced um, here on page one with the help of images, of course, to convey the meaning of the words. Uh, they can listen to the pronunciation of the words. And there are two speaking tasks, two simple speaking tasks um, following the introduction of the new vocabulary. The first one here is about students uh, talking in pairs, asking um, or, or saying to each other things like, I like cheese, I like chicken, what about you? Simple answer, uh, me too or I don't. So that's the first um, um, short speaking task, basically to get students or to, to encourage students to communicate using the new words um, as uh, to communicate as themselves using the, the new words. And then we ask them to have a look at the right-hand side of the first spread, the right-hand page, where we have um, a photo story, a photo story that is also the first part of the after-school um, uh, club uh, video. And uh, we ask students here, in this case, look at the photo story on uh, page 59, find and say the food words. So it's about activating their prior knowledge, making a connection between the new words we have introduced and the photo story. And of course, also this advanced organizing activity is also about making them curious about the content of the video story. Then students actually watch uh, the video story, it's got two parts, part one, part two, and afterwards they do um, these two comprehension tasks here, watch part one of the video, read the photo story, how many of these tasks can you do? You know the, the principle, the um, uh, tasks here become increasingly more challenging the further down uh, students go. And we have another um, comprehension task 
uh, here in number three. The um, video, the watching of the video is actually followed by a simple um, functional speaking task, a very simple one actually, um, down here in number four, labeled Let's Talk. Okay, now if you're ready, we can watch the um, two parts of the video and I just like to uh, say one thing, you might uh, be familiar with Mr. Hart, um, this, uh, the, the afternoon um, uh, club uh, teacher uh, that is actually featuring in this episode. Here we go. Okay, let's play the crisp game. What's that? You take a crisp and you guess the flavor. It's simple, come on. Ready, steady, go. I don't like that. What is it? I like it. Is it cheese and onion? Yes, it is. One point for Oliver. You don't like that flavour? No, I don't like it. What is it? It's bacon and onion. Chicken crisps, my favourite. Yes, definitely chicken. Delicious. Very good. A point for both of you. Yuck! These must be sausage and ketchup. I don't like sausage and ketchup crisps. No. Lily doesn't like them either. So, that's five points for Oliver and Alyssa, and no points for Ahmed and Lily. We don't like this game. Mr Hart? Yes, Oliver? Do you want to play? Me? But there are no crisps. I've got some crisps. They're in my school bag. What? An I Guess the flavour. Yes, okay. Don't look, Mr. Hart. Here they are. Ready. Hmm. I'm not sure. Sausage and onion, perhaps? Or maybe cheese and onion? Go on. Eat it, Mr. Hart. Yes. Okay. It's disgusting. What is it? <laughs> it's a chilli flavour crisp. 
extra hot. <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Hart. I think you need this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we hope you, you like the fact that our very own uh, Matt David, our video producer, appeared as Mr. Hart, the teacher in the after school club. Let's go and have a look at the second spread of each unit. This is um, the spread where we focus on the first um, grammar point. There are two grammar points in each unit. This one is about present simple uh, negative. So remember the uh, new structure, present simple negative, gets introduced with the help of the video. Now there is um, a first receptive grammar task. Students think back to the language in the uh, video and they complete the sentences here. They don't need to manipulate form or produce the form yet. It's a step-by-step -step approach to the teaching and learning of um, grammar. Then they listen and check. Uh, the next thing is there is a language overview. We have a language box. We have a look box to um, show uh, or, or demonstrate the form, in this case um, the short form. We're not presenting the rules yet. This is followed by the second receptive task. The students match the sentences from number two with the pictures by writing one to six, numbers one to six in the boxes. And this is um, followed with a bit of form practice. They cover the language box and in pairs they challenge each other uh, to remember the sentences um, from the language box. And last but not least, number five, this is grammar for communication. Students are using the um, new form, um, uh, present simple uh, neg negative, to actually um, create sentences talking about themselves, their family and their friends in connection with uh, the topic of the unit. Now before we have a look at the right hand side of the screen, let's look at the page from the appendix that goes with this page. So down here in the footer we have a cross reference to the appendix. It says grammar uh, rules, um, wraps and um, revision. So we, we are going to this page in the appendix now and you can see this uh, gives students a good overview, gives them the rule, but also gives them um, further uh, revision practice and it gives them um, a wrap. I mean, we have to uh, be honest, there are not too many 10-year-olds who are in love with grammar. And this is a serious issue. Students often kind of associate grammar work with something that is boring and so on and so forth. But of course, if they find it boring, then this has a certain impact on uh, their retention of grammar structures and their ability to apply the grammar correctly. So this actually always reminds me of an anecdote that my co-author on the second edition of a book I wrote for Helbling, um, Teaching Grammar Creatively, uh, Scott Thornbury um, uh, mentioned. Scott says when he was a young teacher, he was teaching in, in Cairo. And it was a Sunday afternoon, he was walking uh, down the street and all of a sudden he noticed that one of the uh, students from his classes was actually uh, coming up towards him. And uh, this student, Ahmed, was actually uh, carrying a sports bag over his shoulder. So um, Scott wanted to do a bit of small talk and said, Ahmed, what are you up to? And Ahmed looked at Scott and said, I go 
to the club. Scott, who is now one of the world's leading grammarians, tried to do a bit of discreet correction and said, Ahmed, I'm... To which Ahmed replied, Ah, go going went, what does it matter? And that's a key point. If grammar doesn't matter to our students, then there is the problem that they will actually not try to get it right. And one way of helping them to remember grammar is um, encouraging them to notice grammar form and doing that in a multisensory and fun way. And this is what um, you will see you will be able to achieve using uh, the grammar wraps in um, English step by step. So we have the rule, first of all, we have a grammar table, and then um, students can actually watch the grammar wrap. We'll be doing this uh, in a minute before they get engaged in some grammar for communication um, revision task. Let's now watch the wrap together. Now clap, clap, clap for the grammar rap. And today it's... Present Simple Negative! I like. I don't like. Nah. You like. You don't like. Ha. He likes. He doesn't like. She likes. She doesn't like. Nah. It likes, uh-huh, it doesn't like We like, oh yeah, we don't like No way You like, ha, huh. you don't like Nah, they like, yeah, they don't like Nah For the grammar rap, you need to clap, clap, clap But don't stop there, there's more to share I don't like milk ha, You don't like steak No, he doesn't like crisps ha, She doesn't like cake It doesn't like bread ha, We don't like meat uh -huh. They don't like chilli Give us a treat Yeah. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that uh, grammar wrap and that it will, uh, that kind of uh, thing will help uh, grammar find a place in your students' hearts. Uh, that was the left-hand page of spread two that Herbert was talking about in terms of the grammar. Moving now to the right-hand page, this is the second vocabulary lesson in the unit. And, of course, rap is a kind of music, a kind of song. And here we utilize uh, song again to introduce this uh, second vocabulary area. In the first lesson of the unit, you saw how the first vocabulary set was introduced through a video. Here it's via a song. And this really helps to uh, make the language memorable and to make the activities uh, engaging. And uh, I'd just like to play for you now uh, the song that we have here in this particular lesson uh, as an example of the kind of thing that we have to present vocabulary uh, via songs and music. <laughs> at Luke's Cafe Every day, hey, hey, hey We meet at Luke's Cafe We eat chicken We eat steak We eat ice creams We eat cake We love crisps and burgers too We like sausages What about you? Every day, hey, hey we meet at Luke's Cafe Every day, hey, hey, hey We meet at Luke's Cafe We order chocolate, we order tea We drink the water, that's for free The thing we hate, 
is when it's late And the lights go out at Luke's cafe Every day, hey, hey, hey We meet at Luke's cafe Every day, hey, hey, hey We meet at Luke's cafe Okay, I hope you uh, enjoyed that song and uh, think that your, your students will enjoy it too. Uh, just to finish off on this particular vocabulary lesson, uh, there is, of course, comprehension uh, focus, comprehension tasks for those new words. And then it's uh, very important, as we've mentioned on a, a few occasions today, that uh, students not only acquire knowledge about language, but actually are given the opportunity to use it and to put it into practice. And so very quickly, and this is typical of the lessons in the course, very quickly, by the end of the lesson, they are given the opportunity to actually try using the language that they have, have had presented to them in that lesson. Okay, moving on uh, to the third spread. Uh, this is a regular unit structure, as Herbert mentioned. It makes it easy to teach and easy to learn from. The third spread begins with the second uh, grammar lesson of the unit. And this follows a similar pattern to what Herbert mentioned uh, previously. So first there is a, a nice clear presentation where learners are not required to actually use the language yet, obviously, but they are exposed to it in uh, context. Uh, they are then given a receptive uh, task. Then the language is very clearly shown to them in the, the language overview, the language table here. And then again, they are quickly allowed the opportunity to try to use that language. Uh, th this is, um, it, when you think about this journey from initial language awareness to making language your own and taking ownership of that language, it's a bit like when you uh, learn to ride a bike. At first, you perhaps want to be able to see the bike, to feel it, to sit on it, and maybe have a, a parent or another adult walking alongside you, or maybe you're using stabilizers to make sure you don't fall off. But it would become quite frustrating if you weren't quite quickly given the opportunity to try it out for yourself as well. So we have that combination here, the nice combination of safety, but then opportunity to actually uh, use the language uh, quite quickly. Uh, and uh, in, the, in the appendix, as, as Herbert mentioned uh, earlier at the back of the book, there is the opportunity to go and uh, review the grammar, look again at the, the grammar rules, and uh, for selected grammar, listen to the grammar rap. Okay, the, uh, moving to the right-hand page of spread three. Here we move uh, away from the, uh, the grammar and the vocabulary lessons and into the skills section of the unit. And we start with uh, what we call the, the, the first basic skills page. Notable things here are, firstly, that the, the, pair, the, the skills are paired, so we have listening and speaking on this page. And a good thing about having this basic skills to start with it, it, is it gives all of the students the opportunity to experience uh, success. Then we move to spread four. Here we have the uh, second basic skills page. Again, it's a pair of skills. It's reading and writing in this case. And again, they're given that opportunity to succeed. All the, the students have the opportunity to succeed with these basic skills pages. As we've mentioned uh, with uh, also New More, uh, the audio versions of the texts are available. That offers additional support for learners who need it. And they can listen to the audio at varying speeds of their choice, depending on what they're actually comfortable with. Moving to the right-hand uh, page of spread four, this is when we move into uh, what we call the skills options pages. Um, again, they are paired skills. So again, here we have listening and speaking. And the idea here is that this is really key, again, for differentiation. So you have the basic skills pages for the students who need that more basic approach. You then have the option of 
using slightly more challenging uh, skills lessons for those students who are ready for it. And therefore, you have multiple choices. You can use either basic skills or the skills options, or indeed uh, both. Uh, we then move to spread five. Uh, this is the second of the skills options pages. Again, it is paired skills. Again, it is reading and writing. So it's that nice regular unit structure. So it's familiar and easy to teach and easy to learn from. And um, in this case, another really nice key feature around this theme, this really important theme of differentiation, is that there are alternative versions of even these texts, these skills options texts. And there is not only one alternative version. Uh, I'll come to that in a second. There are, there are two. Uh, but firstly, to let you know where these are available, they're available to the teacher in the teacher's book and to the students via eBook Plus. So if they have eBook Plus, they get these uh, different versions of texts and also via the media app. So. Those two alternative versions of uh, these reading texts, there is a simpler and less challenging, more supportive graphic version done as a, a, a cartoon strip, like the one I showed you earlier with the, the, the dog story. Um, and then there is also an enriched version, so a slightly more challenging version. So in effect, you actually have three versions of the text. You have the one that is on the main student's book page, and then you have this graphic version for students who need that slightly simpler approach <clears throat> and the enriched version for those students who can cope uh, with that. OK, that was the left-hand page of the uh, spread five, the, the last spread in the unit. Moving to the last page of the unit, and we have uh, three different flavors of this page, uh, which uh, appear in, in the different units. The first flavor, the first possibility, is that this lesson is a fantasy video story. So you, hopefully you're getting the idea that this is a course that is very rich in video. Here we have an, a nice fantasy uh, video story. And I mentioned earlier when I, I talked about uh, the importance of fiction and the power of stories and the centrality of stories to the, the human experience throughout the ages. And this video story here is centered around uh, this idea. I'll read it out to you. It's called The Secret Spring. Um, and it's about a young boy who discovers a pool of water, the secret spring, in a hidden room under his house. In the pool of water, he sees the face of a young wolf. In another world, a forest world of dinosaurs and strange animals, a wolf discovers another pool of water. And in that water, she sees the face of a young boy. Now, hopefully, while I was reading that to you, what was happening in your in your mind is that lots of questions were firing off, lots of curiosity, lots of wondering about what happens next. And that is one of the key elements of the power of storytelling in life generally, but also when it comes to learning and utilizing that power to exploit that human desire to know what happens next, the natural uh, spark of imagination and curiosity. But it also serves really serious um, learning purposes. So you could consider, in fact, that um, stories are perhaps the oldest form of teaching. We all know that in caves there were those stories scrawled on, in, in, in pictorial form on, on the cave walls. And people used to tell each other stories to convey information, important information about their societies, their cultures, to instill values. And story still serves that purpose in our world today, in our society today, and it can do the same in our classroom. Uh, it also helps, obviously, with things like uh, brain development, improving concentration. So there are many, many benefits to using story in this way. And 
I'd like to show you because um, I've been talking about this and describing it, but there's nothing like seeing something with your own eyes to really appreciate. Um, hopefully, the, you'll, you'll agree the, the beauty of the animation in these videos and just how captivating they are going to be for your learners. OK, so um, I'll just show you an example now. Run, little wolf! Run! my house. Where's the wolf? Where's the wolf? I'm the wolf. What? No, you're a girl. <gasps> Who are you? My name's Jenna. I'm a wolf, not a girl. And what's this? Um, a dress. Your dress. Who are you? Where am I? My name's Aiden, and you are a girl. You're in the cellar of my family's house. Let me out! I want to go home! It's okay. Please, we can help you. We? Who is we? Me and my sister, Victoria. Jenna, it's okay. You can come out. Please, you're safe here. Promise? Of course. <laughs> uh, oh. Go on, you can do it. <laughs> well done. in here. You can sit by the fire. Hey! That's my home! The forest world! That's my painting! And this is our home! Who are you? Uh, Victoria, this is Jenna. She's from... from... the cellar. There's a strange pool of water... <gasps> the secret spring! Aiden King, listen to me. Listen. Do not go into the cellar. Oh. I'm sorry. And now you know why. The secret spring is very dangerous. Vicky? <clears throat> You're from my world. You're from the forest world. Who are you? What are you? What? No. Victoria, I don't believe it. But it's true, Aiden. There's a lot to tell you. OK, I hope you enjoyed the amazing quality, the colours, the characters in, in that fantasy video story. Um, still on the last page of each unit, I mentioned that there are three flavours. Uh, the first is that fantasy video story. Uh, the second alternative, again exploiting the power of story, is this nice feature, Storytime, which also serves as extra reading. 
And moving on, uh, actually just to mention on that, uh, also there are the, the graphic versions in the same way that for previous reading texts, I've shown that there are those different versions of text. Here also we have a, a less challenging graphic version to support students who need that extra support. Uh, and the third flavor is something completely uh, different. It's a poster project, which obviously brings to bear here to, in order to carry out and you know, plan together and carry out these kinds of projects. Um, in this case, instilling also values, the importance of collecting money for a good cause. Uh, this requires those four C's that I mentioned early in terms of 21st century skills, creativity, communication, collaboration, and critical thinking. And at that point, I'll hand over to Herbert to tell you about the workbook. Thank you, Chris. And we can do this very uh, quickly. The workbook is, of course, also in, in color. And that's important. You can see that we have, um, um, with each page, each of the pages in the student's book uh, unit, um, we have a page, an equivalent page here in the workbook, and there's a cross-reference uh, system, so you can um, easily also select uh, homework for the students. The key point here is the uh, illustrations are colorful, are nice, but they're not overloaded, because that is very important. Research has clearly shown that students, um, especially students who find it difficult to focus their attention, they actually also need white space. So it's um, colorful illustrations, nice illustrations, motivating. At the same time, uh, it's not overloaded. Uh, so the first uh, two pages, um, they go with vocabulary and the language from the after-school club. There are very, very important everyday English chunks of language that we are practicing here also. Then you remember the third page was about the first um, um, grammar area, and we have the equivalent page here. You remember the, the fourth page was about the song and the introduction of the second uh, lexical set. So here we have the equivalent, and then we are talking um, grammar uh, two, and um, the first basic uh, skills page. Of course, also, we're doing the same thing here. We always pair up two uh, skills areas, in this case, again, listening and speaking, and on the next page, reading that leads um, to writing. So we have some model texts here that students uh, can actually um, imitate when they start writing their own texts here. Um, page, um, the next page uh, gives um, students the first um, equivalent page to the two skills option pages. This is about listening and speaking again, and now uh, reading and writing on uh, the left-hand side of the next uh, spread. Um, last but not least, what we have here is a page to work on some of the language from the uh, Secret Spring um, video. Right. And now this is something I would like to um, uh, briefly elaborate on a, a little bit. Um, I think Chris mentioned twice the importance of helping students um, with their learning to learn. So we have a series of uh, pages, actually four pages in English, um, step by step, which are titled Becoming a Learning Champion. Now the content is of course uh, such that um, it would be way above, way above level. So we, we decided to give these um, um, texts to the students in German. So let's maybe have um, a look at, at theme four here. So on the right-hand side of, these, the, of this slide, and it's all about was macht man am besten mit dem Handy beim Lernen oder Aufgaben machen. And there is a certain pattern here. We are asking um, the students, the learners, 
questions first. So they're supposed to start reflecting on their own kind of behavior when it comes to using um, mobiles. So the questions are, um, wenn ich lerne oder Aufgabe mache, habe ich mein Handy um, seit abgeschaltet, werde ich immer wieder durch Handy Nachrichten gestört, habe ich mein Handy in Reichweite, ich schalte mein Handy uh, bei Tag praktisch niemals ab, dann ab, wenn ich uh, nicht gestört werden möchte, uh, kaum ab, aber ich lasse es in einem anderen Raum, während ich Aufgabe mache. So the students, they think about their answers to these questions, um, then um, they can, can compare them uh, to a partner's, before they actually read about the outcomes of some recent studies. And this is about a study, it's actually fascinating, it's a study from the new science of learning, I think it was carried out a couple of years ago, where they did a, 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 an experiment with um, uh, teenagers where one group was given a very difficult, very challenging cognitive task And while they were trying to solve the, the puzzle, the task, they had their mobile on, on the desk in front of them. The second group, a control group, had the same task and they had been asked to um, switch their mobile off. Um, and so their mobile was on the table, it was switched off. A third um, group, a second control group, had no mobile on the desk and there was another uh, control group that had a different mobile on the desk, so not their own, somebody else's mobile. And the fascinating outcome of this study, I, I, I almost couldn't believe it first, but it makes so sense, doesn't it? That was that as long as there is a mobile on the desk, no matter whether it's switched on or switched off, no matter whether it's their own mobile or somebody else's phone, um, uh, students are less focused and their results were actually much worse, significantly worse, compared to the one group who had no mobile on their desk, whose results were actually 20% on average above the results of the control group. Uh, or control groups rather. So we're finishing off with basically some tips for the students and we're saying, das ist wichtig für deine Zukunft, denn so lernst du besser. So this is in line with what the Lehrplan says that um, it's one of the, the important tasks, one of the important educational objectives to help learners uh, develop awareness of their own learning process and we hope this is going to make a contribution um, to that. We're finishing off, and this is not new uh, to you, with a Word file, one or two pages depending on the um, unit. We have the lexical set here first and then um, we show the, the words in context again, so the English word, the word in context, uh, used in a context sentence and um, finally Uh, we have a translation of the word. And at this point, I'm going to hand over to Chris again. Thank you. Okay, just to finish, a quick uh, reminder of some of the key things that we have been showing you uh, about uh, English step-by-step -step today. So firstly, that uh, careful step-by-step -step approach to grammar so that all students have the opportunity to experience success. Then we have um, a lot of features that focus on uh, differentiation and helping you in the classroom and learners also outside of the classroom with um, th their specific areas where they need more, more work. So one of the, the key ones is around skills development and I showed you those pages where there are the, the basic skills and the skills options plus those differentiated uh, texts. Uh, then we have uh, individualized support for every student in the personal 
uh, learning track. Uh, that's coming up in the next section, so I won't say any more about that now, the learning track and the vocabulary trainer. We have the enhanced video, so lovely videos that we, we had the opportunity to see, the Secret Spring, the After School Club, as well as the Grammar Raps, uh, which are the final point there, language presented uh, via videos, uh, raps and songs to make it memorable and meaningful for uh, the learners. And um, just to say, do please check out the, the, the final section, which is coming up next. It's about the exciting new digital package available for both courses, including my personal learning track and vocabulary trainer. We believe that these components will really help with uh, more effective learning, more individualized learning, focusing on students' individual needs, and they will also save you as the teacher many, many hours of your time. So please check out that final session. Thank you. Okay, and this is the fourth part of our session, the new digital package for the new version of more and for English step by step. Here's an overview of what this digital package um, includes. We have, of course, the ebook plus for the student's book and the workbook. And it does exactly uh, all the nice things that your students, if they're now using the ebook plus, um, are actually uh, using. So it, it, uh, it has, for example, all the videos and, and audios available on, on, on a click of the mouse and, and um, all the other features that your students are working with at the moment. Uh, plus, there is the Helbling uh, Media app. Cyber homework, there will be a cyber homework package for the new version of more and for English step by step. And then the three new features that we are now going to present um, to you. Uh, I think we are actually starting with the dialogue karaoke uh, feature. Uh, then we are going to present to you the new uh, vocabulary trainer. And finally, uh, the personal learning track for each and every student. Let's get started. No, before we actually start, uh, just very quickly, um, uh, what uh, these new features and the digital package uh, will actually do for uh, the students. Well, first of all, of course, it is very much in line with what the layer plan demands in terms of getting students also to work autonomously. And of course, this includes working at home. They've been able to do that for many years now using uh, the cyber homework. But, but these new features, of course, uh, will actually um, uh, mean that they can do other things also, for example, prepare really effectively for uh, tests. It includes, of course, um, formative feedback. So when they go in the eBook Plus, all the activities are interactive and they get formative feedback. Um, then <coughs> the dialogue karaoke that you're going to see in a minute um, uh, practices or students practice with the help of it important chunks of language. They, they practice uh, pronunciation, intonation, and they can um, listen to the results. Um, a key thing is uh, the new feature in the workbook, audios, um, uh, regular audios in, in the workbook. And this is a new cool feature. Students can actually decide on the speed of the audios. You know that some students find it difficult to um, listen and understand um, videos, and uh, sorry, audios when they're too fast, and um, then sometimes panic because it's too fast. So students can actually select, and this is easy when they click on the audio symbol in their eBook Plus, um, they see this pop-up window and they can select the, the speed. So if there's something they find difficult to understand, they can slow down the speed without, and that's um, uh, beautiful, without distorting the actual um, 
language. Okay, now Cyber Homework, I don't need to present uh, to you again. It's just confirmation there will be a Cyber Homework package for both uh, courses. Here we go. We're going to look at the vocabulary trainer. So this vocabulary trainer can actually be accessed um, from the ebook plus and you can see um, here is the icon uh, for the vocabulary trainer. When students um, uh, click on it, they actually um, <coughs> go to this uh, page. And um, you will see it's, it's very simple, but it's pretty sophisticated in terms of the support it gives students with the learning and the studying of new words and um, uh, phrases. So there are three different phases. The first phase is about checking whether students actually understand the meaning of the new words. So um, it, it says here, check what you know, say the word in English. The key thing is, as you will see, students say this to themselves and they have to actually check. So they become an agent of their own learning process. If they cheat themselves, well, it's actually their problem because they're not going to learn the words well. The second phase, phase B, this is about recognition. Students see three different options for a gapped sentence and they decide which of these three options is the correct one. And then option C, phase um, C, is about production. They see a gapped sentence, a, a, Q in, a Q in German, and they need to write the right, the correct English word there. What's important to say is students can only go from A to B when they've done all the words from A correctly. They can only go from B to C when they've um, um, done all the words from B correctly. So this is just one example. So when students go into unit 13 and they practice A, the A phase, uh, they have a German word, Unfall, and they need to say accident. They click to check and then they see the word accident. They can listen to it if they're not sure about the pronunciation and they can listen to a context sentence. And now this is where learners have to take or have to learn to be responsible because if they didn't get it right and they click no, the word is not going to appear again in their learning stack, in the stack of words they need to learn, um, but they're not going to learn it well. So they're not going to make progress. If they get it right, if they click it, it will not appear again. If they click no, it'll come again and again and again until they get it right and until they get all the words right. Let's look at an example from phase B. Uh, as I said, there's a context sentence. Yesterday there was a with strong winds, a story, a sunny. Well, it is a storm. And here the student has already clicked the word and um, if the word is, if it's the correct word, then uh, this um, little um, rectangle there turns green. When they've done all the words in phase B, they get to phase C. And this is about writing a missing word. Yesterday there was a Sturm, storm. They need to write in, the student has already done that, with strong winds. It's of course easy when the word is almost a cognate, like sturm and, and storm, um, uh, but it's of course, as we know, not always easy for students with, with many other words. Okay, so this is the vocabulary trainer. Students get feedback um, when they have finished a stack, so when a phase is done and they've done all the words, they've got all the words correct, then um, the, the ring around A and also B here is actually complete. 
So what um, the student can see here and what we can see here is that this student has done all the words in phase A, all the words in phase B, and is now working on phase C and has done, I guess, about 23% um, of the words in phase C. Right. Dialogue karaoke, I wasn't right about the order. <laughs> we have it here in the slides. So dialogue karaoke is, is the next uh, feature I'd like to present to you. Um, it's, a, it's a simple feature and a powerful one. So it helps students to practice chunks of language, their pronunciation, their intonation, makes their progress in interactive speaking I almost said visible, of course audible, and it's accessible again via the, the student's book and the e-book plus. So what uh, students um, um, have here is dialogues, short dialogues, gradually uh, dialogues that are a little bit longer, and they can listen to these uh, dialogues. You can see that here on the left-hand side of the page underneath uh, Dialogue Karaoke. They can listen to the dialogues. They can record themselves um, uh, actually talking or speaking the role of, of um, uh, speaker A or speaker B, or they can also do uh, both. So like in a real karaoke, they can see the words um, through some kind of highlighting mechanism, the sentences, and they they say them and they actually record themselves and then they can play it all, all um, to themselves and they can reset it if they're not happy with um, their progress yet. Okay? And this concludes the dialogue karaoke and here comes the big moment. Chris is coming back and he's going to show you the personal learning track. Thank you, Herbert. <clears throat> OK, um, as Herbert uh, said, we've mentioned this a, a few times already uh, today. And this is the moment, like uh, the wolf in the secret spring, for the uh, secretive My Personal Learning Track to emerge from its pool. And I'm going to reveal it to you in all of its uh, glory. First thing to say about this is that this is very new. It's new in th three ways. Uh, Firstly, it's a, a new component for the new edition of More. Secondly, it is a, a new component for our new course, uh, English Step by Step. And thirdly, it's new because no other course has ever uh, offered you a product of this type uh, for this particular age group. In essence, <clears throat> and this doesn't really do it justice, but just in, in essence, it's a cycle of practice tests and individualized practice that will then allow students to focus on what they really need and show them their improvement. Uh, but I need to show you this actually in practice. How does this actually work? <clears throat> to do that, I'd like to step uh, first outside of the world of, of language teaching and into the world of medicine. Now, in, in my life, I've uh, probably met far more doctors than I would have liked to have, have met. Uh, there was one point in my life where my nickname among my friends was the English patient. Um, I mention that uh, not in order to reveal anything about my personal history, but just to get across that I do understand the difference between a good doctor and, let's say, a less good doctor. Now, imagine you go to see your doctor, and um, you sit down, and they ask you a few questions, and you say a few things to them, and what you get back from them is, <clears throat> OK, so having listened to you, in my view, your health rating is approximately 5 out of 10. You would look at them and you would say, well, tell me more. Tell me what's wrong with me. Uh, what are you going to do to help me get better? What can I do to help myself get better? And really what you want a good doctor to do is to send you for tests that will give reliable results to actually diagnose where you need to improve your health. That in itself is also not enough. You need them then to give you 
appropriate treatment for whatever your, your physical ailments are, um, you then would want them to test you again to see whether your health has improved, whether it has improved sufficiently. If not, you would want further treatment. And then another test to make sure that you are actually better now. And that is what a good doctor would do for you. Not that doctor just on his or her own, because they wouldn't be able to do all of that themselves. They would need help from various tools. But in effect, in effect that becomes a, a kind of personal health plan that gets you better. It's essentially the same in terms of what we're talking about here for my personal learning track. It takes you through that same cycle of uh, teaching and learning, testing, appropriate treatment or practice based on what you as an individual, as a student, need, seeing your improvement, more tests, more practice, until you get to where you want to get to. Um, and that is essentially my personal learning track. I'll show you um, in, in a second uh, how this works in a bit more detail. Uh, but firstly, that simple cycle is on one level common sense. It is also very much backed up by research. And I'll hand you over again to Herbert to talk you through uh, the research that supports this as an effective learning cycle. Well, it all started in 2013 with the publication of a seminal meta-study on learning. A group of cognitive psychologists um, around a researcher called Danlowski actually started looking at, I think, seven or 800 um, scientific papers um, uh, that were all on the efficacy of different um, um, study strategies. And um, when they looked at all these results, um, what they found out was that many of the study strategies that students were using at that time and that students um, are currently still uh, using a lot, I dare say, are actually very um, inefficient or ineffective and sometimes detrimental to the students' learning. Among those frequently used study strategies are things like re-reading. So, for example, um, wanting to study, I don't know, a list of, of words and phrases or grammar structures. And, and in order to remember them, the student sits down, and you know that, and, and, and reads through the list of words and the structures again and again and again and again. This re-reading is often accompanied by um, students highlighting the more difficult words, so using this, this kind of marker pens and highlighting them in, in pink and, and orange and, and yellow and, and green and, and blue and what have you, uh, or uh, underlining them and often on top of that using a strategy that is called cramming. So rather than starting early enough and, and practicing regularly, what, these, um, what many students do is like, you know, the, the last afternoon before the test, um, they sit down and study for hours, sometimes into the evening or even night hours to try and cram as much knowledge um, into their their uh, brains. Well, the problem with all those is that rereading, highlighting, underlining, and cramming as study strategies are not very um, useful or efficient uh, strategies um, in terms of making sure that students really build up um, long-term retention of um, language. Um, the other thing they found out was that many students who use these strategies that are actually not very um, efficient believe they're using the best strategies already. So what they have found out is there are two strategies, two 
very simple strategies that are actually the most um, efficient ones. One is what's called practice testing, okay? So uh, doing a test on what I need to study rather than sitting down and studying. And, and these practice tests are um, uh, these days often called retrieval practice, so practicing in order to, to retrieve information or language in this case. And the second one is distributed practice, so rather than cramming, um, um, uh, kind of like spreading out the, the studying over a period of several uh, days, and, and that is a, a key uh, point. Now, I'm giving back to Chris, who is now finally showing you um, what uh, this um, new feature is all about. Thank you, Herbert. Um, yeah, so, I mean, all of that hopefully makes a great deal of sense. The, the idea of regular practice testing, uh, distributed practice, that spaced repetition, as effective means of, of improving uh, your learner's English, the challenge, of course, is a practical one with, you know, perhaps 100 students in any, at any one time in your various groups. H how do you actually do that, um, practically speaking, giving them regular tests, all the marking that that involves, analyzing the results, looking at the performance of individual students, the whole class, and then thinking, okay, based on how they've done, what do I need to give them next to help them in areas where they're relatively weak? Um, and then probably test them again and go through that cycle that I was describing earlier. That is probably humanly impossible um, in practice without the help of um, an enabler, the enabler here being digital tools. And this is technology that um, is there to support and to help the teacher. It obviously doesn't replace the teacher. The role of the teacher is still key in terms of um, encouraging learners to use this kind of uh, material and to show interest in terms of going in and seeing how they're doing and making them aware of, of that interest. That is all obviously going to be very motivating for them. But the tool itself basically does this job for you. And the way that this works, uh, there's a simple unit cycle. Uh, this is accessed uh, from eBook Plus. And what happens is the teaching and learning uh, through the student's book unit happens in the usual way, uh, in the classroom most likely. At the end of each unit uh, from eBook Plus, as I, as I mentioned, students can go into their personal learning track. They do test one. They will be shown immediately the results of test one. Based on their performance, based on their results in the different language and skills areas from that unit, they will be directed to appropriate amounts of practice. So they either do uh, practice one and practice two, or just practice two. Um, they then take another test, and in most cases, they're going to do better because they have done that practice in the meantime. Their test two result will probably be better than test one, and they will be shown how they have improved. That will be motivating for them there and then, in the moment, but also in the long term, it's important that this is done regularly, so it happens at the end of every unit. It's not just mid-course and end-of-course testing. It's every unit. They go through this positive cycle of test, practice, test again, and see your improvement. I'll just show you a few screenshots of how this actually um, looks and feels. So this is the uh, start screen for starting a test. One or two key points here is uh, that these are done uh, most likely outside of the classroom. They are auto-marked, so you as a teacher do not need to mark these. Uh, the scores are made immediately visible. They cover language and uh, skills in terms of reading and, and listening. Um, then, depending on the, the score uh, that they get in that test, as I mentioned, they are then 
automatically, and this again is without you having to do anything, without the student having to do anything, they are automatically directed to the practice that they need based on their performance in that test. Um, so they do that individual practice. If the practice scores show that they actually need further practice, they are directed to the further practice um, in, in practice two. And then if they are improving, they are given that positive feedback that will mo motivate them uh, in the short term and, and in the long term as well. And they are then directed to go and do test two. Uh, so they do test two and they will then be shown uh, feedback on their, t on their score for that second test. And as I said earlier, it will in most cases be better than test one and that will be really motivating for them and some really nice visuals here as well. So it's a very simple cycle and it's, in a way it's a very simple product because it's something that, as I said, you don't have to do anything uh, for it to work. Students can go in and um, the, the product takes them, the system takes them through this process. Uh, for the students and um, his or her parents, it's very visible how they're doing, so how much they're doing and how well they're doing via this uh, simple uh, traffic light color coding uh, system. And also the teacher, uh, it's possible for you to see a class view, so you can see all of your students and how they're doing in each unit, how much they've done, how well they're doing. And also you can drill down into more detail and see how an individual student is doing in a bit more detail. So that's very helpful in, and informative, hopefully, for you in terms of understanding. And going back to a, a point much earlier in this session uh, today, the importance of, of viewing and understanding your students as individuals with individual needs. Now, hopefully, uh, what that means is various things. Two really key things is uh, more personalized and therefore more effective learning. Um, but also crucially for you, it, it saves you a huge amount of time. So the fact that the tests and the practice are auto-scored, you don't have to do anything. And the fact that then the students are provided with appropriate practice. Just thinking about how much time that could practically save you. Um, I'll take you through a, an example calculation. So. Let's say that you have four groups of, of students, four classes, um, English classes at, at any one time. And for the sake of argument, let's say you have 25 students in each class. So you have 100 students. <clears throat> now, how often do you give them a practice test of this type? Perhaps once, once a month or so? So let's say that's um, you know, eight or nine times a year. So you have... Um, 100 students and you test them, let's say, eight times a year, that is 800 tests. Now, how long does it take you to mark a test if it's done on paper? It might take you five or 10 minutes. If it takes you 10 minutes, that is 8,000 minutes in one year just spent marking. Now, that is really or could be robot work. You, you don't need to be a human being necessarily to do the marking. And it, all that valuable time is saved by this my personal, personal learning track because that marking is done automatically. How many hours that is? That is something like 130 hours or so just on marking in a year. And that only takes you to that first step in the cycle that I mentioned when you go to see the doctor, that the doctor says, well, based on this test or you score five out of ten or whatever it is what you then need what the students really need is the treatment to the practice that is going to help them to get better and then testing them again so you know all those hours saved just on the donkey work of marking which is frankly a bit of a waste of human life if you're spending all those hours doing that but then on top of that, think of the time it would take you to find the practice material that all your students need individually and as a group, test them again, find more practice, etc. So it's a huge time saver for the teacher as well as a really helpful learning tool for the students. And as I said, leading to more effective and, and more personalized learning. And just, you know, the final question there, what, what could you do that would be more humanly useful with all that time that you could save? Okay, so let's bring Herbert back in here. Thank you, Chris, and thank you all uh, for watching. 
We've covered a lot of gra ground today, and this concludes our sessions on uh, the two new course books, uh, The New More and English Step by Step. If you want to find out uh, more, uh, then of course there is the opportunity. Um, I hope many of you will be joining us um, when we tour Austria in February and March, where we'll be showing you more examples. We'll be touring with our uh, composer, who is going to present uh, some of the new songs also, and we'll present more raps and also more uh, videos. And we'll have a chance to go into a bit more detail uh, when it comes to the new uh, digital features too. And another way of finding out more is for you to go to the Helbling website where you can download um, information material about uh, both uh, courses. Thanks for watching. <laughs>